<laughs> Call the meeting to order. Yeah, yeah, 108. Up again. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. John? Here. Neil? Here. Ron is gone today. Sean? Here. And Troy is here. Is there anything, <clears throat> any additions or corrections to the agenda? Oh, Could we have the windows and doors of the county shop for the wings? And the budget. Move to approve the agenda with the addition of the county shop. The move by Sean to accept the agenda. Agenda is amended. Is there a second to the motion? Second. Seconded by Dale. Is there any correct? Is there any discussion? Any discussions? Any further discussion? See none. Of see the vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Meeting minutes from September 8th. I didn't really find anything in there. hearing for the Nelson and Griggs District Health Unit proposed 2018 budget. Like that. Anything else? Accept the meeting minutes from September 8th as amended and dispense with the reading as our second. Oh, second by Sean. Is there any discussion? Any discussion? Any further discussion? Seeing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Okay, take a look at the bills. There is one that we need to add. It just came in this morning. 
post it meter? Yes. For $121, that's at Great America Financial Services. Thousand for the new courthouse. That's the interest. On interest the only payment. That's correct. I believe. I think so. No. B and D is a vendor, eh? Six month? Yes. Right. Okay. You have to check, make sure Wayne doesn't buy a bobcat. <laughs> the reason, do you guys know the reason that there's interest only at one? On one payment, and then the next payment's a bigger one, and there's principal on there. I don't. It, <clears throat> so, and the, they set these bonds. These municipal bonds are set up in tranches, and the and the tranches. There's a tranche that matures every year. Yep. So, um, in this pay period, there's there's none. Nothing is maturing, but we pay interest twice a year on all the bonds that are outstanding on all the tranches that are outstanding. So right now, we pay those, that $23,700 goes to B&D, and then they, in turn, pay all the bondholders whatever the interest they're due on all those $100,000 tranches that are out, or however big they are. And then in the next, in the spring, when that payment comes due, one of those tranches is gonna mature. Right. So we'll pay the interest on all the stuff that we're paying now, plus the principal on that one tranche, and then that one will be gone. So the so this twenty three thousand dollar interest will keep declining. That payment will keep declining. Every well, it will to some degree. <clears throat> Not as fast as the principal comes down, because the long tranches have a higher interest. Yeah. Right. So the little ones right now that are you know these. The, I mean, not little, the short duration ones, you know, they're, the interest rate on those was probably 1.2% or something. So the interest payment, the interest expense will go down as time goes on, but not as fast as the balance goes away. Right, so we'll, the combination, we're paying now 144000 for both of them or something like that. I think it's one hundred seventy, isn't it? No. It isn't that much. Oh, so it's a hundred thousand dollars that matures every year, right. plus the interest right. rate. So sure. will that keep going? Will that figure keep lessening then, or will it be the hundred forty thousand dollars every year till the end? It'll be whatever is less based on the amount of principal that rolls off every year. Right, but the print, but that's 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 gonna overshadowed be. by the long term interest. Debt. The long term interest on those long term tranches, the ones that don't that don't mature until. Uh, 23 mm -hmm. right no 33 <clears throat> those are probably three three and a half percent interest and these short ones were one or right. I'm sure the the one year one that's, that's gone already was probably 0.75 or something right. okay. so that interest was it's kind of immaterial so it will be a declining it will It'll be a all declining be. payment anyway yeah. it is it isn't a it's not a fixed payment, payment schedule payment. like you go to the bank and right. get a pay. No, it's not like that. Okay. Do they pay the interest on those right away or do they put them in escrow until the insurance comes right to mature? No, they pay them right away. The, the, whoever's holding these bonds gets two payments a year yeah. okay. and they're both interest payments until the maturity date on the tranche that they have then they'll get that last interest payment and the principal at the same time. And the interest payment is tax-free to them. That's correct. Yeah. 
that's the that's the attraction for like financial institutions to buy municipal bonds. They don't have to pay federal income tax on the on the interest income. Right. So it's just like a treasury bond, same thing. Just a different backer. Okay. So, are they saleable? Say, say that say there was a down, a real downturn in in interest rates. Yeah. Yep. Then a bank may, at that point, if the interest rates go down, which they can't go down a lot right now because they're pretty low, but if they go down, then the value of the bond goes up. Mm -hmm. So there might be a premium on that bond, and if the bank decided they wanted to get out of it, they could sell it. Right. I don't know, and I haven't had this discussion with Moody's lately, um, how the county's credit rating looks, you know, because that will play into who would be willing to buy the bond. Mm -hmm. Because when we were having those discussions, the creditors all overreacted and they downgraded the county. And I don't know how long it takes for that to come back. Yeah, and I mean, and they they really had no right to downgrade the county. It wasn't they county debt, they right? Had, not at that point. No. Now that it's done, and it's a general obligation lease, yep. now it is the county's problem. Yep. But at that point, I don't think it was. But we never answered the question because we never got that far. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Dale to approve the bills as presented with the addition of the Great America Financial Services invoice is our second. Okay. Second up by Sean. Is there any discussion? Is there any discussion? Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, we'll proceed to vote. John? Aye. Dale? Aye. Sean? Aye. Troy votes aye. Motion carried. Wayne, are you up already? Am I already? Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> okay, let's take care of uh, JQ first. Uh, <clears throat> last meeting, Christians voted to uh, go ahead with the Dahl Bridge and have that listed as the top priority next year. And so I called Jake Laudry from KLJ, and he talked to Brian Fuchs from the DLT. Several times, and then I'll just uh, turn it over to Jake. And, uh, so, so right now, the Dahl Bridge is on schedule for 2021. Originally, it was on schedule for 2017. He decided not to do it, so they pushed it to 2021. But he said if you guys want to do it in 2018, they can move money around and make it available to do the box culvert project this coming year. Um, and also, we submitted that House Bill 1176. Uh, application and that has been approved so if you wanted to use state funds for the local share and the engineering you can there's no uh like no look like county funds it would come from that the state um, bills so do you guys want to do that or do you want, would you like to bid it in the spring or bid it this winter yeah or as soon as, as soon as you can is out. Kind of what the consensus was at the last meeting. I don't know. What wins? So one thing with the with There's, using the federal funds, we need to follow their bid schedules. We right. they bid it through DOT bid. Yeah. Um, and looking at, so they have different deadlines for things that have to be done. And the first deadline is to get the environmental document done. Um, I looked at the, the bid schedule, the current bid, bid schedule for the spring, 
and the earliest we would be able to bid it would be April 13th. And if we chose that bid date, we need to have an environmental document done by early November, which doesn't give us a lot of time because people would have to go out and do the wetland survey, cultural survey, get those, it's essentially a book together. One of them goes to the state, the cultural, and then the wetland book or report goes to the Corps of Engineers. So and all this is for stuff. a 405 permit? 404, per, 404 permit for the wetland, and, and then the cultural is anytime you're disturbing any soil, they need to, they, for a project like this, they do a class three cultural survey, which is actual cultural people go out and walk the project to make sure there's no Indian artifacts, essentially, in our part of the country. But, and that's all required by federal government. So if we're using federal funds, we have to abide by their rules, fortunately or unfortunately. Um, so yeah, I looked that stuff up. Basically. Do you have to do a wetland on anything or what? Yeah. I mean, I, you can throw a stone from there to the river. I don't think there's a wetland in between there. We have to do wetland uh, reports <laughs> even in cities where, I mean, it's all sidewalk. Yeah, it's, it's pretty amazing. Crazy. It slows us down big time. Unfortunately, because we wow. still have to wait for the court to make a decision on it. Well, we know how long, long that takes. <laughs> Four or five years? <laughs> it depends on the project. Oh. 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 Something they just hand them out for. Us. <laughs> well, simpler projects tend to go through pretty quick. I mean, pretty quick is 30 to 60 days. Right. Six years and holding. What's cons I mean, maybe there's enough foliage down there, but. Well, so we need to get, if we're going to do this in the spring, we need to get at this right now. I talked to the wetland, our, our wetland people, which is kind of the biggest um, worry I have because the core, every year is different, but once that vegetation pretty much dies off, they don't allow wetland delineations to be done anymore. So then you have to wait till the next spring when everything greens up again. I talked to him this week and he said, you know, pro we probably have till mid-October to get that done. I mean, it's really, we're talking three to four weeks. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I mean, if you'd like to bid it in the spring, it's something we should move on to make sure we can get that, that environmental stuff done. Seems logical, especially since we have the opportunity to use the house wheel for the match or house money for the. I'd make a motion that we um, instruct Jake to move forward with the necessary permitting in order to get this project bid in this April 13th bid cycle, 2018. I'd second that motion. Moved by John, seconded by Sean that we ask Jake to move forward with the permitting process on the Dahl Bridge replacement. Is there any discussion? Any discussion? Any further discussion? Seeing none, we'll proceed to vote. John? Aye. Dale? Aye. Sean? Aye. Troy votes aye. Motion carries. So I did, when Wayne called me, I put together a contract to bring with to the meeting today. So I have that with. And that, the contract would cover the, the complete environmental process and permitting, and then also uh, the design of the plans. Uh, one thing, I, I didn't add in any right away or anything into it for right away. I don't know that we're going to right away. And I know you guys got some of your own on that um, drain project. Or just do yourself. So I figured maybe tell me. I think James took care of it. Yeah, I do. So I figured, I didn't, yeah, I just didn't want to add anything in there for that um, in case the county does want to do that on your own. I think Troy might have talked about it there. But you guys did the survey. So before that, so I could give, I, so I could present it to the, right. to, to Odegaards. I mean, they approved your plan, basically. So they gave us easement on that right away yes. in exchange for permission okay. to keep that ditch cleaned Sorry, up. Sorry, I was thinking of Dahlberg. You're talking what we did on the, yeah, the other side. Right. We haven't yes, done anything. We haven't class. done anything 
with right away with with, with uh, made we don't know what we need. Yeah. Right. And I don't even know who owns the property. So Carlson's East. No, oh. it's Munson's on both sides, but Louise might own some of the stuff on the on the north side. So one thing I could do, if you guys are okay with this for this project, Carlson's fence line is that's right, Kim. fifty yards north, north of, that of it. That's bridge. right. Yeah. If we need right away, if you want to do the same thing as we did last time, um, so KLJ does the plats, and I think Jamie wrote up all the other documents. I think um, I will just consider the plats and that's a part of the plans, and you guys write up documents. And what I'll kind of doc what, what kind of documents? The easement documents. Yeah, there's easements and there's appraisal stuff that have waivers. Different things. And Jamie must have done. I didn't do any do that the last one. Jamie must have took care of that. So, so we'll just leave this contract the way it is, and I, I'll just we'll get the class done. Give him Jamie. He takes care of the right way. So we need a 405 permit and a 408, or just a 404? 404. 404. 404. <clears throat> yep. Um. So for that contract for the environmental and design of the project, and I'll put throw those plats in there in here as well. It came out to fifty-three thousand one hundred fifty dollars. And what's the proposed total cost of the project? Um, the estimated cost is four hundred thousand dollars at this point, I and mean, that's with current box culverts that we've done this year. There's, is there going to be two two box culverts? No, it'll be one double. It's it's a double, yeah, double 10 by 10, 80 foot box culvert. So it'll so, be 20 by 10. So we're at about 12% on the engineering costs and some of them are. Yeah, that sounds good. Real close. 20th. I'd like to see it done cheaper, but I don't suppose you're going to do that. I did it the same way as uh, everything. We just put our hours together, how long it's going to take us, and that's what it comes out to be. Looking at other box culverts that we've done, it, it, it's actually a little cheaper. I mean, and I'm not one of you, I'm, hmm. honestly, it is, but, um, so yeah, I, I can't lower the price, I'm sorry. So I have a question, that, well, maybe I, I'll, I'll, it's a personal question, I'll ask you something. Should I be afraid? <laughs> of course. <laughs> it's it's best. Be. No, I, I have a, a potential project for myself that I'm looking at. Now, if I hired you guys to do the engineering and I'm doing, I'm using my money to do it with, there's no permitting, none of that. Bold. No, even if the county, you were using your own county money, right. there's a lot less rules we have to follow. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> so then the engineering cost goes down substantially? Uh, yeah, big time. I mean, like this, half of this contract is environmental. Right. I mean, the, what I do isn't even half of the cost, the right. design part. It's and it's gotten way worse even since I've started seven years ago. Way worse. Right. So. But I would. I mean, if I do this thing, I would. I would like to have somebody engineering, but I'm not going to pay twenty five thousand dollars to get an engineer either. <laughs> well, and sometimes, yeah. And I, we'll see what happens. But. So, is there any questions for me on it? No, I'm good. That's a standard contract that we'll use before. Yeah, I keep them all exact same. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then there's two pages in the back that explain the scope of the contract. Yep. So.
Well, do you want to talk about that reimbursement request first, or do you want to deal with the contract first? No, you mean. Right. You, we have a reimbursement request in here, too. Yep. Mm -hmm. there, that is for um, Highway 28, um, Construction Administration. Basically, the uh, construction documentation and getting tickets, all <coughs> tickets put together for that project. That amount is... $2,695.50. You put my home phone number in here? It's been the same since I've started. What <laughs> is and I don't know if it's something Jenny had in there originally, and I just pulled it from that, or if I asked Samantha. I'm guessing it's from, from when Jenny was doing it. I don't really type something it. Something with your right normal card, Troy? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I, I my phone was disconnected for years, and then I hooked it back up, only because I get my internet and my cable TV through the telephone company, but I've never purchased a phone and plugged it into the Where wall. So if somebody <laughs> tries to call that number, they're not going to oh, get and, very far. And honestly, it says that there, oh, but if right DOT right. has questions, I've gotten calls. He knows to talk to me okay. about these. So. Okay. But do you want me to change the number on the next one? I can. Or maybe you want it that way. Where is the number? <laughs> what number are we talking about? On the bottom of the letter. 2922. Two, 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 two. Okay. How will we uh, sign the request for funding reimbursement? <laughs> Project 0031. Been moved by Sean that we send in a reimbursement request to <coughs> state. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Dale. Is there any discussion? Any discussion? Any further discussion? Seeing none, we'll proceed to vote. John? Aye. Dale? Aye. Sean? Aye. Three votes aye. Cheers. Now we should look at that agreement. I just crossed out Samantha's name and put Lori's. <coughs> Questions on this engineering agreement with KLJ for the tall bridge? I guess I can get through the engineering agreement for the County Road 22 the County Road 23 box culvert project with KLJ. Been moved by Dale to approve the engineering agreement with KLJ for the Conroe 23 box culvert replacement. Is there a second in motion? No second. Second by Sean. Is there any discussion? Any discussion? Any further discussion? Seeing none, we'll proceed to vote. John? Aye. Dale? Aye. Sean? Aye. Troy votes aye. Motion carries. Okay. Coming next to the yes. sixth yep. in beer. I got an email from Samantha. Oh, okay. Did she tell you the reason? 
she just said Tom was coming and she wanted me to be there. So he's still kind of scratching his head trying to figure out how to get consistent results from these gravel tests. He just can't figure out why there can't either. I mean, and I and I see his pain. <laughs> I feel his pain because if you if the testing can't be replicated, either the sampling methodology is not consistent or not accurate, not correct, or something somewhere in the whole process or something's wrong with the test I mean it, it, don't you think that should be more consistent than it is well, one thing what do you see in other places one thing the DOT has done and this is since I even started is there it's always been an issue very oh. varying results so what the DOT has done in this the last few years and actually cost us a ton of money um, to try to put all our people through it but they they do not allow anyone to take tests or complete tests, you know, like even sample in the field. They don't want anyone to sample in the field without some training, not some training, some specialized training that they put on because they want everyone doing it the same way. Right. Because they're tired of these fights. Because it, it's, it's very common on projects. Um, contractor takes a test, takes it somewhere else, and it's different than DOT's results. So to get away from that and to standardize it across the whole state yeah. that require all of us to take these sampling tests and aggregate tests um, to work on their projects. So, I mean, this graveling project isn't technically their project, but all our people are certified just because if we're going to go on a DOT project, we need it anyway. Mm -hmm. So that may be, I mean, part of it, because it, it can differ just by taking the sample and how the sample is split down you, the test results can vary hugely. You can't just you can't take a sample, put it in a bag in the field, go into your office and dump half of it out. Send a, send part of it to one place and part of it to another. It's already segregated just in that those two actions. Right. You need to put it through a splitter. Like I think it's eight to twelve times. You should split it down, dump half of it, keep half of it, split it down, keep doing that process to split those that sample down so both parties have the exact same. <coughs> Gravel. It's a very complicated process. I mean, not complicated, but time-consuming and um, touchy. <clears throat> well, and he's saying that the just collecting the sample is. He thinks they were kind of up until now, they didn't really understand the. DOT required sampling methodology. I mean, it it ha it starts there. I mean, if you got garbage going in, you got garbage coming out. Right. But and the way I understand that on this last go round, yep, the sample that was taken by KLJ, there was a was put in a bag and there was a sample taken at the same time for the where Tom sent it, who was also an approved testing laboratory, and they came up with very dissimilar results both of them done correctly I mean they they weren't they didn't split a sample they took a sample here and a sample here right next to each other you guys got one the other one went to I forget the name of the testing company well he's got he's waiting for one to come back yet yeah and so how do you and then the the, 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 the sample the gravel in the piles prior to putting it on was tested and it was deemed usable. How do you put up gravel, have it in a pile, have it tested so you know you can bid the project, bid the project, and then all of a sudden the gravel doesn't test. That's You can't run business that way. And, and if, if we, unless we can guarantee these contractors that here's the gravel, we send somebody out to test it and tell them they can use it, how are we going to get anybody to do anything when they're that Fogs hanging over their head as well. It tested once, but now it might not again. They yeah, can't I do that. I, the thing is, it's the this is how gravel producers have always done it. And I guess the testing you you were talking about from before is the stuff that he had sent in. Mm-hmm. 
And did the, I guess the big question that I have is most gravel producers just test gradation, which wasn't the issue here. The issue is the shale. It's a much more expensive test. No, he had to test it tested exact. Actually, they tested it to a, a greater degree than you people tested it. I saw the tests side by side. So we'll wait till Tom gets here and he can explain it. But I didn't get that deep into. I, I spent an hour at, going over the stuff with him, and 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 it, it, again, it makes sense to me that there has to be some at some point. You or we or somebody has to say, okay, that gravel's usable, because if we wait till if they say, yeah, it's usable, and then it gets on the road and it's not usable, all we're doing is building in a added price to the county because if that keeps going on the contractor is going to say I can never make this gravel pass I'm going to have to bid this thing higher because I know I'm going to get knocked back after the fact so it's a disservice to the taxpayers to not come up with a a no a go no go decision for the gravel before it's put on it does it pass or doesn't it pass well the thing that bothers me is the the variations in these tests. I mean, yeah, I know. So you got one test that says eight percent shale and one that says fifteen. I know. His actually said five point four. Well, it was like he'll fifteen, and, and we did. We don't like to do this, but we did send that exact same sample to one of a, to an independent testing firm and had them test it. Their results came back higher than ours, and uh, we did nothing. We did nothing to it. We didn't even tell them the situation. So I'm, not, I'm not. I'm not. No, I'm this. not trying to blame anybody, Jake. Other no, than know. maybe the but test. Right there, maybe the <laughs> Maybe the test isn't very accurate. You, you but it's just, not. A, well, I mean, it's a little bit higher. It's not. Like you, you just. You just proved it. You just reinforced Troy's point that the tests aren't accurate. You tested it, sent it to somebody else, and it came back with a different test. You can't have that. At some point, we got to say, "Yep, that's good enough." And that should happen before Is that because, it goes on to the. So, so pile. knowing that the tests have limitations. Apparently, I mean, and I'm you're talking to somebody that doesn't know much about this deal. Can we then spec that gravel at those tight of tolerances when we don't know if we can even verify whether that's the level of shale, for instance, that's in the product? I mean, holy cow! The thing is, the twelve percent max is not a tight. That is getting to the point of very, very poor quality gravel. Anything above that, I question whether it should have been put on the road. I mean, it, that comes to the point of the county's buying crap gravel, and that's why these deductions are in place, which in my own opinion, this is not Newt's opinion, this is my own opinion, I don't think the deductions are enough for what happens to that gravel after a year of driving on it. But who tested the gravel to say it that to before it was put on? Who tested it in the pile? I don't know. That wasn't. I mean, DOT spec is that it is always tested from the road, the final placement, because they want to make sure the material that is on the road is good material. I mean, if something happened to it on the way there, if someone adds a scoop of sand to it. But we, we don't know. But the test isn't. The test is never accurate every time. If you can have two different companies test it, they get two different results. How, how, which company you pick then, or which test you pick to be the final test? That's the point. If you take out of a pile, <clears throat> which we're doing, sometimes it's real good. Mm -hmm. You get a bunch of good loads, then it's poor quality. So it's not everything is exactly. So you test every load? Huh? No. We test three times a day. That's uh, DOT spec. So they brought 1,000 ton out, three tests. They brought 10,000 ton out, three tests. You just space them out. I mean, otherwise, just get, it would get Well, that's a flip out. of the coin, no? <laughs> that's so it's, it's, a, it's a small sample size. But when they, the tests are so consistent all the way across, and, we, and we've been coming out of this pit for three years. So I have all the test results from 2015 till this year. And very consistent. They're all, I mean, between 11% and what we had this year, 15%. So I don't know. I, I would really like to know what happened to that sample that's 5.4%. I, I don't understand it at all because that's, that's too big of a difference. That's not typical. That's what concerns me. At all. So 
So I don't know. So could we could we make it a requirement then of KLJ that when you take one sample, you take another sample, bag it for the contractor, and then the contractor can send that to a qualified engineering firm to be all to be to be checked, and, and then would that would that satisfy? Then it's handled the same. And then we can decide whether or not there's, and if there's a variation, then what do we blame it on? I mean, if you I can't make that call, but I mean, we can talk about it. I'd have to talk to my bosses and the guys who are in charge of construction. But I mean, know, if we paid you to take another sample, you'd do it. I would rather see KLJ hang on to it than on who the contractors are. Those bays can get switched around but just to make darn sure it's the same sample we took. Um, but I'd, like to, I'd have to talk to my, my boss. It's, 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 a, it's a different process than what we've done. Well, I know, but you, you, I, I think you're mixed up. I, I, we hire you. I don't think you talk to your bosses and see whether you're not to do it. I think we tell you to do it, and, and then if you don't want to do it, then you don't get to be the engineering firm. I mean, it's a pretty simple. We're trying to protect the contractors here. And, and you're claiming that you, you are the, the God's test on this, and we have other testing that proves otherwise. Let, let's, why would be this, what would be the problem? Just giving us two bags, seal it, mark no, it? No, they give them to you. Yep. They don't want to give them to the contractor. Yeah, we, I, we, I, I get that. No. Yep. We, yeah, I, mean, we just, we I think we're all trying to do the right thing here. We're all trying to protect the guy that's buying the gravel and that's stacked there. Yep, we are, we are, but I mean... And what bothers me is this, the inconsistency, inconsistency of the testing. Either the, either the sampling methodology is not the same, or those tests aren't very reliable. Uh, and I don't know which, what's wrong, but... Well, how, how, the, I, 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 know, I know what's wrong, it's just a, it's the nature of the product itself. It isn't mixed thoroughly. So you have spots in there that, that are going to have too much yellow, you have spots that don't have enough. Just because they took 3,000 3, tons of this product and 3,000 tons of this product and mixed it together over a belt doesn't mean it got thoroughly blended. So it depends on what you grab, where you grab it. Oh, yeah. I mean, overall, the whole, the whole pile has the right, probably had the right quantities in there, but they didn't get mixed together. But if you take enough samples, you should get to the right answer. Absolutely. Yeah, if you average them all, it, I mean, it averages all. Right. And it, we've seen piles where it's huge differences from test to test. And then you know for sure, well, these piles have not been mixed. But that hasn't been the case. That's not a typical case. I mean, most contractors, especially now with the new belt systems, they're mixed pretty well. Well, granted, the outsides of the pile are always segregated. There's going to be fluff out there. Always. That's why there's a special methodology for testing a pile. And even loading a truck, I mean, they have to. It's best if they're mixing it as they're loading the truck. Take a or take a bucket from here, a bucket from here, and a bucket from here. They have to take it all from one spot. That's not good practice. And I'm not saying anyone's done that. I'm just saying from the past experience. So anyway, we don't need to ask this out today because we're going to talk about it in two weeks. But that Tom's a little frustrated because he would like the testing to be more consistent and he is scratching his head because he can't figure it out. I believe he operated in good faith. He put the gravel up according to the spec. No, I know. And and then all of a sudden he gets penalized for it. Yeah, if you're a contractor, the only thing you do is you're going to have to cost, charge more money to for it because it's a cost of operation. So I think we should try to refine the testing process a little bit. I'm going to have... Uh our head construction and testing guy from in Valley City, actually he's head guy on the whole eastern side of the state, probably come with, just in case there's questions that I can't answer. I don't I don't do this kind of stuff every day. I, I get the results. I don't know what happens, so that would be perfect. Okay. Carry on, Wayne. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> I requested to uh, get new doors for our shop, three doors. There's four door doors total, but to get three overhead doors. Uh, they've been hit, they've been bent, they're leaking. 
and uh, they're not set right, they're, they're a chain pull up and we like to get new doors that seal good to keep the heat in the building and uh, with uh, electric uh, lifts on them. And then the windows are just single pane windows in the cement block building. And we had some insulated windows in there. I thought we talked about this last meeting. No? And I'd like to get permission to do that. Get some quotes. Oh. The cold, yeah, not for sure. You would just want colds to see where we're at. You're going to get some bids. Yeah, I don't, you don't need our permission to get prices, I don't think, do you? His question before when I, I spoke to him was what was the bid threshold? So it's, it's 150000 you can do improvements without bidding the project. Oh. So with public guess, funds. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Right. Yeah, you can just get yeah, it must have changed after this last session. The threshold up to one hundred fifty thousand. Also, it was one hundred, right? Yeah. Okay. So if I get quotes and whoever's the lowest, do I have to bring it back again to get it? Well, you've only got forty thousand dollars in your yeah. budget. Yeah. Right. So, like, well, like, what are you going to get quotes for Midland and Twin City and somebody to do windows or what? I mean, there's not that many people that put in overhead doors that size. Midland is Twin City. Same oh, it is the same thing? Yeah. Oh. Somebody said Enterprise? I've had them put them in. Oh. But they buy a Midland door. Yeah. Yeah. Grand Forks, or PS doors, I think they build their own doors, don't they? Yeah, that's what Neil said. I think they're Rainer. Oh, they're Rainer. Rainer. Oh, okay. But I've never had them, but... I was Midland looking doors. cheapest usually. I think we have the reader in our shop, I think. No, nope. some of them have like an R27 door. I can't remember which vendor it was. Well, I think Midland's got, I think mine in my shop is a three inch door. Yeah. Three inch, but they're R19, I think. Oh, that's what I've got too. Okay. Yep. And then uh, I got a couple of quotes from Popey. Um, Arrowwood Prairie Co op. Gave me a quote, uh, $1.359. And I was going to do a 6,000 gallon bid for that. And then Town and Country asked if we were bidding for propane. And so I said, Yeah, give me a price. So she gave me a price of $1.18 per gallon for 6,000 gallons. And right now, propane is what, 90 cents? What's cash price? But this is for the winter uh, fuel program. Right. They think it's going to go up. That's what everyone says. That's, That's what they think every year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, I've heard that. The they, and all the whatever. Uh huh? They figure it's going to go up because of all the grain and the corn drying and whatever to create a shortage and make the price. <laughs> they, really they do that in that September over here. here. So. Do you know what cash price is, William? I can't. I think I just filled there not too long ago for 87 cents or something. Yeah, I said 90 cents. Yeah. Yeah. If you do the summer, go for 89. Yeah, I did too, but they won't lock that in for the winter season. Mostly. Right. How many gallons of storage do we have? I have two, th two th 1,000 gallon tanks. At the shop? At the shop. And here? And here, it's, I don't know if it's 1,000 or. I think so. I don't. It looks like a 500. I think. And when I requested it, I asked, they said we want to, would like to be on the auto fuel program so that if they're there, they keep a check on the tank. How and many then, gallons do we use a year? I used uh, just about 5,000 gallons last year. Are you full and all? Do you fill in a summer fuel? There you go. Yeah. That building uses 5,000 gallons of propane. There's no insulation. It's just a rock. There's it's nothing. Like it's a glass so building. Like a yeah. rock. <laughs> yeah, like a glass building. So yeah, the cold is the cold makes it in until it hits the warm. And that's probably on the inside of the building. Where it's <laughs> Heat goes from warm to cool. Yeah. <laughs> so, I told her she had got the bid. So I think the ones that you have a lock in. So which one do you want to do? You want to do the 118? I'm going to do the 118. 
Mm-hmm. Um, so you you bid enough for here too? Yeah. I did. Okay. Your energies are increased on me. I don't think you're going to use that much here. You use no, it's electric. Yeah. It's electric off peak here, but that generator starts once a week. Yeah, and that's diesel fuel. That's diesel. Oh, that's right. That's diesel. And we keep that too, but and it's getting. The, I guess the low light came on or a warning, but uh, we didn't want to put too much number two in there because that's all we got. Don't put number two in there. No, so I think we, I don't think you put anything in there. Yeah, hopefully it'll hang in there till. God, somebody's got to have number one someplace, don't they? Uh, yeah. Someone must have put something in because that alarm is, wasn't going off. Yeah, we couldn't explain why it wasn't going off. I was here Saturday right. when the power went out, or Sunday when the power went out, and it wasn't going off. There, I was here for two hours when I was running. Mm-hmm. Generator ran. Got jet A. I mean, that's kerosene. I think it was still like a half a tank. Oh. When it went off. Oh. Oh, that's right. That thing goes off when it's still pretty full. So a guy should just buy this. Ryan was concerned, so that they went came down here with our uh, pickup with the service tank, and they're going to put some in there. But then they are looking at the level of the tank, and it wasn't that low. So we decided to wait for a couple of weeks if we can. Get them what is this? So well, wait for two months. Put some power service in it. Power service. Yeah. 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 They old, you can't do that. Can't not, you? not under them generators. Oh. They draw all that air through there to run, when they're running. If you don't put number one in there, you're going to jail it. Hmm. Okay. Okay. I do have a question. On the maintainers, are, are we getting bids on those yet? <coughs> We aren't bidding yet, but we're going to have to do that later this fall because they say it takes like six months in order to get them made. So they have to be at 50% window or tires, the glass got to be good. I think good. we've got to replace some glass because there's yeah. some that have got cracked glass and whatever. So could we streamline the operation and go to three maintainers instead of four? And see how you could get over everything with three maintainers. <clears throat> well, we have less, you know, we have less townships. We have less roads than we did 10 years ago because the minimum maintenance roads that are they're more efficient, bigger, faster machines. You can't, you can only go so fast, but you know, we, a lot of roads we can't blade off enough anyway because of all the extra traffic we have, like uh, Hannaford and Sutton Road. Now, Macro road, whatever we don't get in the ten going across to Finley. So, but could we stagger work schedules? So could we run? Could we run two hours before and two hours after? I mean, the machine, the machine certainly has the capability. Of, but the the all we're talking about is a labor force. We're not talking about the, the equipment. The equipment. I mean, all if, we're talking about is labor force. Sure. I mean, all you, if you if you if you have eight hours, if you have I know, but so they wouldn't work. They would just start earlier and quit earlier. One main and start earlier and quit earlier. You just spread out the spread out the the work. The machine has the ability to run twenty four hours a day. Well, of course. But okay. why can't why can't we why can't we run shifts? Run four guys on three blades. Right. Yeah. Should be a lot of. Running around, I would think, wouldn't it? And Why? Why? I mean, it's just it's just a management issue. I mean, somebody would have to drive out to this machine or whatever to take over. You know, it's going to be driving it back, Cooperstown or the Benford or wherever you're going to have. Maybe you have all three of them in Cooper. No, I, again, it would just, you just have to set up If you did that, way. you'd even provide more efficiencies, Wayne, because you're driving a pickup around the county instead of a blade. The only thing is, every time if you're going to put fuel on and out in the country and stuff, it takes longer to do that than it does to come to town to get hose in the tank. Because you've got to fill your service tank, go out, fill your machine, come back, fill your service tank, because it's 100 gallon tanks.
And then to get your roads plowed in the winter time, you, you can't plow in the dark. I don't care. You can do it in the city where there's lights. But uh, the cost for those four machines is $72,400. Right now. Right now. Right. And yes. we're paying 99000 almost 100000 Mm hmm. And ask your taxpayers, I guess, I don't know. Everybody wants the roads open as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll have to see what the we'll have to see what the bids come in at. See if see if the money budgeted will cover one machine. And it, it will for eighteen, but because we're only going to pay six months of the of the lease. I mean, they come in a they come do it in middle in the summer, right? Yeah, but you pay for a year. But the money's budgeted. The money's the money budgeted in eighteen is, is well. It's a tw it's budgeted for a twelve month period, basically. You pay your seventy two thousand, and that goes from that point until the next year. So it's not a six month lease. It's a twelve month. No, but that doesn't it come due in the middle of the year? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we don't spend the money until that time. Right. Well, which we just must have just paid it. You think the cost of the leases are going to remain about the same? No. No. Yeah. It's it's going to be a hundred thousand or plus. It's going to be over a hundred thousand, I think, because it was ninety nine thousand nine hundred hundred and sixty dollars in two thousand twelve, and then they because we had some equity built up. In the machines, <clears throat> and then you just wanted to really get them in here real bad, and they lowered the price down to seventy-two thousand. I don't know what it's going to be, and what the demand is for equipment. Well, we'll see when we see. Mm -hmm. Matt, we'll just have to see if the if the money probably before the end of the year, you know, we may have to get some bids together. To well, yeah, I mean, we yeah. have to get start right now. Mm -hmm. So, how many hours are, are going to be on them? Mm -hmm. I think they're over. Five thousand hours on now, I think. And where's the uh, cutoff? What? What? How many hours? Where do we have to start paying for overage? Is it at six thousand? Seven hundred. Okay. You've never had to pay you know, extra overage for any. Right. They've always got, gotten, gotten them out of there by the end of the lease. Mm -hmm. Right. What, if you don't use all the hours that you are have available, then do you get credit on that last lease payment? So we waste it if we don't use it. Yeah. Well, they, when they come out, they'll assess the value of them too. When they come out, there'll be somebody coming out to appraise like the tires, the glass, the hours on each machine, so the value may not be exactly the same for each. Well, the value machine. the value set on the machines is just the, the deductions. Yeah, the is, is, is well that that's set. Uh, the code when I read the lease, <coughs> all that happens is if the tires are less than fifty percent, they're going to deduct. Yeah. If the glass is bad, they deduct. So the, the the buyback set. It was it was a it was a buyback a fixed buyback lease. Yeah, they deduct. Right. Yeah. Well, we'll just have to see what okay. right. what happens. I mean, if, it, if it's way, way over, we'll have to look at some other method. Yeah, 
guaranteed bar bets, 177,000. Yeah. Six thousand dollars is the That's what I found. Yeah. And on the other machine it's one hundred and sixty seven thousand. So if you went and bought one, what do they cost? Tony or you? Tony. Three hundred and fifty, three hundred and eighty, I think was the contract. I don't I haven't looked at yeah, it for so a while. Nelson Coney just bought some a year or two ago and that's what it was like like the V three got it three sixty. No, I just have the bar back. Okay. Because if I remember right, the buyback was about half the cost of the equipment. They're three year leases? Five. Five. I think they call it a yearly lease or lease one year at a time. Yep. But if you don't, we don't stop it or whatever, then it's renews it to another yeah. year. And we had a lot of equity. We, we weren't we weren't financing much in these last leases. I mean, it wasn't much at all. So it was a bad deal. It was a good deal, but we used up all our equity. There's no equity in the, you know. There was some equity put into the machines we that we traded in. It looked like there was some equity in those machines, and that went against the purchase price. Mm -hmm. Now we're not going to have any equity put in. That's what equity. made the lease cheaper than right. the previous. Right, because we're not getting <coughs> the the buyback isn't money we're going to get. If we turn them in. The buyback was what they took off the front end of the lease. Correct? Right. Yeah. yeah. We'd been better off to keep paying $99,960 a year. Because then we'd have had, well, the balloon payment would have been smaller, so there, there would have been some equity then because if we got that buyback price, it would have paid off the line plus some equity. Well, they wouldn't have paid us interest on that money we were paying them, and so it really wouldn't have. Uh, yeah, if you're trying to, if you're using it for a savings account and you didn't want any interest on it, and you're trying to, you're trying to outsmart the budgeting process. That's the way to do it. But overall, it's cheaper to do it the way the way it was done. F overall. But it doesn't leave as much money in the in your budget for the buyback. Is what it takes over there. So anyway, they're going to be four hundred thousand dollar, four hundred thousand dollar machines, probably somewhere in that price. And then, and if it holds true, you're going to finance two hundred thousand dollars of it over five years, five years. So it's going to be eight hundred thousand dollars over five years. At whatever interest rate, so you can do the math and pretty, get pretty close to what the payment's going to be. That's all right. I think so. Well, that'd be one hundred thirty-five thousand. Yep. I think we'll like township leases of cap late. If I remember right, they pay like thirty-three thousand dollars a year. So, so there we go. <laughs> one hundred thirty-two thousand. And if you if you do four of them, that's. I wouldn't quote me directly on that number, but that seems to be floating around in my head. Like I said, doing it this way, if they're 400,000 and then there's half of it, it comes pretty close. And you, can you put 1,200 hours a year on them? Not quite. Not quite, I don't think. It depends on the winter. Yeah. You know, you get a bad winter, you get a lot of hours on You get an open winter. You but you got 5,000 hours on them, right? That, Maybe not quite. It could be four thousand five hundred and some hours. I think when you looked at it a couple of years ago, a couple of years into it, you were right at the twelve hundred hours. And but then we had some slow winters, so I suppose it slowed them up some. And what did you budget? A hundred thousand. Yeah. 
But if you go releasing those things for 30 bucks an hour, that's a steal, isn't it? Yeah. But I don't like the... If you did it right, you'd use all the hours that you could. Otherwise, you're leaving money on the table. Yeah, but it's so hard to do that because you're talking the the lease the lease payment is a dry lease payment, and so it costs you it costs you money to leave those hours laying on the table, but it also costs you money to use them up because you got got to put fuel, you got to put an operator into it, you take off it, you take tires off it, so it's probably better to to let the thirty dollars an hour go back than to spend sixty dollars an hour or more to use up those hours. I was more along the lines of thinking if you could get by with less machines and use all the hours that well, were absolutely. available. And then it depends. If you could structure it somehow so that your help could stand it. You know, I don't know yeah. if you can do that or not. And then what do they charge you for overage? I mean, if they're only charging you $30 an hour for overage, of course, it, you, you run them over. Right. Yeah. That, that's kind of what was yep. going through my head anyway. Yep. Okay. So, I don't even see you here, Wayne. We lost you. Road. There we are. Are you your budget out yet? <laughs> they're in. I haven't seen a complaint. They're not out. Uh, no, well, they're not. They're, this is the one that's going to be. They're not approved yet, Wayne. So, so asphalt, let's see, uh, what did you put under equipment? Yeah. Uh, equipment major purchases, 110, just what you asked for. Let's raise that up to 132, then get it in. Too late. <laughs> we, the only thing you can do from here on out is lower it. It hasn't been set yet. No, no, once we, once we published it. Public once meeting yet, we haven't had that. Huh? <laughs> well, no, this no. is in the paper. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so once this is published in the paper, the only thing we can do at that meeting is lower it. You can't <laughs> raise it, and that's the truth. You can't right. raise it. So this, this is set in stone. This is in stone unless you want to take some deductions off here. Your salary's looking kind of high. Kind of low now. So no, it's, it just says the last time when you and I, when we're sitting here, so it stayed the same. The thing cannot work with $110. Yeah. And that was just a yes. Right. I should have guessed higher. I should have talked to Dale before and then we could have done $132. Maybe you can buy some case or commodities that would be cheaper. That was Tilmer's. On my big red. Is that one that Dutch ran? What kind is that? Uh, was a mustard mustard. Yeah. yeah. I've been by our place for about 40 years. Yeah. <laughs> What's it under? Um, road. Major. Road and bridge, C7. Right, but it's on C7B, right? Yeah. Equipment? Mm, major Equipment purchases. Major 110. Yeah. So C7B. Oh, there it is. I see. Yeah. Okay. Right below the skid steer line. <laughs> oh, no, that's what you care. You didn't offer us that yet. <laughs> <laughs> You know it's hidden somewhere in your house. Spend that flood money. <laughs> if you could only get that flood money. <laughs> Anything else? <laughs> That's why he wants a budget. He wants to scrutinize it. He's looking for a hidden. Yeah. All he needs is what you need 40? No, 48. Right. Yeah. It's like an Easter egg hunt. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Resolve that real quick. 
Hmm? I said we can resolve that real quick. <laughs> Yeah, no, we can't. We can't add it. You could probably get two of them for the payment on one main dinner. <laughs> that wouldn't be much. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I've got, I guess. Okay. Yeah. Thank, right, you. So. Right, guys. Yep. Thank, Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Yeah. According to Department of Ag letter, did you guys see that? Mm -hmm. And just so we're on, we did, it, it says you have to budget, you have to levy at least three mills or budget an equal amount of revenue that would be raised by three mills. We budgeted, we had $64,000 in there, so we, we put $60,000 into that weed budget. So that's real close to the three mills. So we should qualify for it. Yeah. Right. Do you have that agreement? Are we supposed to execute that? Uh, I don't know if there was an agreement for you to sign. No, it was just the letter. Yeah. Hmm? There was just the letter. There wasn't anything for you to sign with that North Dakota Department of Ag letter. It says, after reviewing, please have your authorized representative sign and return the following to our office. Mm -hmm. Lap tag in the NOGA and the NOGA requirements, whatever that is. Please take time to review and be in closed documents. You know what? This came to me at home. Oh, I bet you that's where the closed yeah. documents are still sitting on my kitchen table. Okay, we didn't get any. This was all we had. Do we need action? Yeah. Looks like it. <coughs> I'll make a motion that you uh, find the enclosed documents, signed, and return as <laughs> required. Is there a second? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll second that. <laughs> second and by Dale. Heck, I'll even third. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be motion carries. <laughs> Is there any discussion? Is there any discussion? Is there any further discussion? <laughs> Seeing none, we'll proceed to vote all in favor. So, uh, all right. Both same side. Most curious. <coughs> that manila envelope sitting right on the corner of our dining room table. I figured Samantha had gotten all the same stuff, but she didn't get the enclosures, huh? No. Nope. Next thing in here is Ron's letter. Um, do you like his commissioner? Hey, you'd like his resignation to take effect on the 20th of October, if that's okay with everybody. Mm -hmm. That will keep him in the loop until we get through the budgeting process if we need his assistance. What's the procedure then, Jamie? Outside, I just I looked at that earlier today. Um, outside of 95 days from the election, <coughs> you guys have to appoint someone. Mm -hmm. A lobbying Turk today, Janice. Oh, yeah. Negative. <laughs> 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 So we can we can continue lobbying later though if we need to. So do we? I guess we've done it up. We did it up in Nelson County when when um, Dan Marquardt passed away. Took applications and did an interview process to appoint someone. Which was a waste of time because you appointed his widow anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Odell <Odell-Vitter. laughs> But actually, she's uh, she's a really good commissioner. I'm not yeah, saying no, that. I'm no. just saying. Yeah. Then Odell got disappointed. <laughs> so I mean, we can so we can we can put out applications, or we can we can talk to people. I mean, you can. 
be a Ferris, I would do it the same way they did it. Take applications, see if anybody wants to apply for it, and and go through the interview process. I think that's the fairest way to do it. Yeah. Guidelines of William F. Buckley, conservative thinking for the <laughs> gradings <laughs> portion of it. So we just run an ad in the paper? Yeah, maybe run an ad for next week in the paper and have a deadline of October 15th and set up an interview and appoint someone up by the 21st. What street does a is the north boundary? The one run by Ron's, I believe, right north of Ron's, isn't it? Right by the park there. Mm -hmm. Runs right by the right right on the south, south side, side of the, of the school. Yep. Right. Right. I believe so. And then and then I was wrong. It's not forty five. It's one block east, east of 45. Oh, really? Yeah. Sean set me straight on that because that's him. <laughs> <laughs> one block east of 45. So that's the southeastern corner from there, southeast of the all the way down, all the way down to, to the township line. Township line, which is the airport road. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. And then four down to 200. Yeah, yeah, right. Zeke lives there. Yep. He certainly does. So, uh, I guess I'd make a motion. We run an article in the paper requesting applicants to fill out Ron Dahl's remaining term. Which is District 1, isn't it? It'll be till next fall. 2008, January or November 2018. Yeah. Is he District 1? Are you 2? I'm um, 2. I'm um, 4, I think. Well, it says in there, yeah. 3. 3. District 3. Yeah, you're District 1. I'm just sure I am. <laughs> This goes clockwise and bump up in this corner and this goes like this. Yeah. So you're five. Yeah, really. <laughs> no. hmm? well, I'm four. Yeah. But it's I'm kind of a line. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Run in a couple of weeks. You got to that ad that you guys are on? Or do we need we need to put that that district in there? With it, yeah, we need. Otherwise, to, people won't know what we're asking. No, it needs it needs to have the it needs to say district three, and 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 then we need to maybe put a little map of where district three is or a description. Yeah, or that they can check with the code. With, you know, everybody should know that because that's who they vote for. They should, but. Or we can just without defining it, I guarantee will cause confusion. We can just state and add District Three and if any questions we can contact others. Please.
so is, is then this is for the October 6th meeting? I would say the October 20th meeting. Okay. You're going to have to run this one once, I would think. Have the applications in by the 15th so you guys can review them. And so what's the application going to consist of? Just name, address? Resonate. You're not going to get anybody. I mean, I think just basically an interest if you're interested in the position. Yeah, I think just name and residence. Name, residential ad address. name address, and telephone number. Yeah. <laughs> Short statement of qualifications, maybe. Everybody's qualified. If, you, if you're in residence, if, you're in residence, if your address is there, you're qualified. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a real low bar for this job. <laughs> <laughs> and the present company groups. <laughs> <laughs> you guys might get some comments from some residents when they listen to that. <laughs> <laughs> to live in the right place. <laughs> can you move there? Yeah, you can move there. <laughs> you mo you made a motion, mm -hmm. didn't you? Uh, oh, yeah. I'll second it. <laughs> Been moved by John, seconded by Sean that we run an ad in the paper for the next two weeks for people interested in filling out the District 3 term vacated by the resignation of Ron Dahl. Is there any discussion? Is there any discussion? Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, I'll proceed to vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, say I'm sign. Motion carried. <coughs> These two estimates in here. Mm -hmm. What wasn't Sam going to do some? She was going to check on projectors, I think. That's what I thought. That in there. Mm -hmm. They were in the last last meeting. Too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but. I mean, a projector, you can buy one for $99, it will sit right, right next to your laptop and full screen. Okay. That letter from Deb. Um, I did talk to Lori a little bit. I don't know who this letter's to. Everybody? Yeah, I guess. It, it isn't fair for her to have a boss in every office in this building. So I, I think that the auditor's office should be the point of contact for the, for the, for the janitors. And if people want something, they can talk to Sam. Or Lori. We have, when we moved in, we put a notebook. And if they had something, everyone is supposed to come in and write right. on this notebook so that Brian and Deb are not looking in 10 different spots. This is, and at the end of every day, we put the notebook out if there's somebody, if somebody's written something on there. If it's nothing, then obviously that notebook isn't there. Mm -hmm. And then, from what I understand, talking with Neb, she has been in the past. If she was going to be gone for the weekend, she was finding a replacement to come in. And you know, we don't require that of any other employees. If they're going to be gone, taking a, a vacation day, we don't require they find a replacement. I don't know why we should have that for the janitors either.
she's in here every day. We don't ever see her. Rare. That we so see she her. she comes at night. In the evening. Walter and Brian. And just from a cursory look, I mean, the, the, it appears pretty clean. I, public building, I don't know. No, I think the building is cleaner than yeah. a lot of them. Yeah. You know, there's not a lot of traffic in here really either, probably, but our cleaning lady comes twice a week at the bank. Well. But she probably doesn't get through this whole building oh, in right. one time either. Well, you know. Portion it up, I suppose. Right. This is a big shed. And I saw, I mean, she made the point that if, you know, there has to be a little bit of responsibility with the other people working here and you spill something to clean right. it up, you know. And if she's gone for a couple of days and somebody run and one of the bathrooms runs out of toilet paper, right. I hope somebody can take the initiative to yeah. replace it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it has been, a role has been taken on, stop, set on top, because we didn't know that the keys were in. There's extra of toilet paper, Kleenex and stuff up in the cupboards, but we didn't know that the keys for the machines. Right, but it isn't the end of the world if the toilet no. paper sits there either. No. What's the difference? But again, I don't believe this is all directed at so much as ones that dealt with her over here like one like us that dealt with her we didn't seem to have issues hmm. if you bring home a bunch of horses new horses and put them in a pasture it takes a while to get things sorted out <laughs> Somebody might end up with bite marks. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> so he's got to be put in a separate pan. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Lord tried to do that. She tried to send them back to, <laughs> to another building. They're <laughs> <laughs> just segregated. There's no way around. <laughs> There's Martin Luther King when you need him. We just got her shoes. <laughs> so, okay. Budget? Budget. So it appears like if you go to page, schedule A, page one, actually it's easier to go to the next page. Go to. Schedule A, page two. And you can see the amount levied in 17 was 1953, and now our adjusted levy amount in 18 is 1579 for a difference of 374,000, which uh, the majority of that is, uh, is the social, social services. services going away. Um, if you look over in the right hand column, you can see the increases or decreases to each budget accordingly. Um, the major one is, uh, is the Water Resource Board um, is budgeted $60,000 less than they were last year. That's just basically burning up a bunch of reserves that they have in, the, in their program. So at, at some time that will go back up again, we'll have to deal with that. Um, other than that, there wasn't any great increases. The county road and bridge fund was uh, was the biggest one, um, along with the the library. If you notice, it, they had seventy one thousand for last year, and now we, can, we have them at eighty thousand for an increase of eight thousand dollars. That was just a function of we gave the library last year what they asked for, rather than what the what the value of four mules was. Not sure why that happened. But we did. Why wouldn't we? Yeah, why wouldn't we? Um, right. Anyway, so... Have they asked for anything this year? Yes. 124000 Uh They caught on. Been doing some reading, have you? <laughs> so, 
so anyway, that 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 puts the library and and all the rest of the the senior citizens historical society, the fair, the GDs, and the gone, of course. That puts them all in the, in the same category where we have made it a habit to levy the max allowable mill levy for them. So. But I I don't think we should <clears throat> levy the maximum amount of allowable mill levy for anybody of these other taxing entities unless they ask us to. Right, and, and if they ask <clears throat> us for something less, that's what we should do. That's what we did. <clears throat> okay. Um, but yeah. now, but now all the budgets, all the requested budgets for those entities has been over and above what the maximum. The maximum. Okay. <clears throat> um, and the reason the library did that, I believe, is they were looking back at the previous year and how much money they got, and they just let me just say, and they just requested the same amount. And the valuation. And that was seventy-one thousand. Was the valuation went number. up? Yep. 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 So this is, this is this puts us under the zero net sum increase. Um, as we move forward here, we're going to have a harder and harder time trying to stay underneath that threshold. And at some point, there's going to have to be consideration giving. If, if we want to keep within that threshold of not raising taxes, then there's only one thing to do, and, and that is to make cuts. And, and we've made about all the cuts we can make. So the natural evolution of the, of this of a budget if you want to maintain zero growth is consolidation of services and that takes advanced planning that takes that takes a vote of the people takes cooperation by your neighbors right and and what pushes that what pushes and drives that consolidation forward is the threat of decreased budget so it, it, we only have if, if if you take the hard line and you say okay we're not sp we're only spending this amount of money and now this amount of money gets spread out a bunch the county and we're not going above that that limit the only way to do it then is to combine services mm -hmm. but and that's a that's a that's a judgment for each individual county, each in, yeah each individual commissioner group of commissioners on a yearly basis. Yeah. But in order in order to make it come true, it takes planning prior to that prior to that budget year you're in. Oh gosh. Okay. And that's limited too. I mean, we've been, you know, consolidation. Mm -hmm. Well, and. and to me, the biggest barrier to that, in my eyes, is there's not very much interest if you look around, if you talk to people from other counties. No, I no. As far as far as as far as merging services with another county, I don't think there is. I, I, there might be some interest, maybe in combining some services. Uh, you know, maybe the treasurer and the auditors. Should be a one. I mean, there, there's a little bit of stuff to be done there, but that didn't go very far the last time we put it before a vote of the people. Mm -hmm. um, Nelson County is giving out a whirl right now. Right. You know, there has to be a, there has to be a, a hurt, a financial hurt out in the in the voting population in order to move that forward. And. So all, all your, but there isn't a whole lot of room left to keep making cuts here. We've taken some of the, some of this, a lot of the slush out of it. And in fact, a, a couple of these, um, the weed board, for instance, next year, in order to have this program, in order to get this a lap, and take, lap yeah. we will actually have to levy three mills. So at that point, I don't think we should. We'll have to spend sixty thousand dollars to get 
whatever reimburse you know. Right. Because we don't we've used up now the the carryover in that budget. So and there's a couple other budgets that are, that are of the same uh, the county agents budget is, is another one where we've used we've used up the, sure. the monies that were in there. Um, so it's gonna take it's gonna be harder and harder and harder as we take the slot as, as we've taken the slush out of the system that it's harder and harder to do that um, so that's where we stand on that and I, I think I think it all I think it all looks correct we never did go, go over the victims advocate fund Jamie but you're just but that money got carried forward anyway so it, it didn't get levied for but we missed that in the last meeting, but it'll be okay here. There's eleven thousand four hundred sixty-six dollars in here. That money actually should be. That money should be spent. But we had a plan. For thought we, we thought we donated it. Don't to the city. Or well, we're only we we're donation. only spending uh, two thousand dollars of it. Witness fees and abused persons outreach center in Valley City. We, we allocated a thousand dollars for it this year. <sighs> so that's all we have to. That's all we're spending. We're gonna have a little bit more because, and I found it works. It's gonna be around a thousand bucks that we're gonna to need to pay a seven, and it can come out of that fund. Yeah, if you do that, then we'll have to pay who? Seven. It's that. It's Marzi's lot stuff that uh, that we have to pay into. The companies have to pay. I think the state got off five hundred thousand dollars of costs of being. Wasn't it suggested first? They haven't made it a mandatory thing. No, we're going to be getting bills at the county. It's going so to be paid. It's going to be paid or collectible in, in a two payment situation. I think it's going to be like four hundred eighty or five hundred eighty bucks from the county. Okay. So so anyway, right now as it stands, there's all that's authorized to be spent is thousand dollars in witness fees and a thousand dollars to the abused persons outreach center in Valley City, and I think that's fine. We may have run into a situation where the state gets us gets on us to spend that money to donate it to one of those agencies that's allowable by by statute. So we might end up having this having to spend money that the state pays us and gets on us for it. Yeah. But it's by statute it'll probably be sent to a couple different places. I haven't even looked um at the net zero sum increase formula this year. <clears throat> so did the state take the social services out of that? Mm -hmm. So we could levy three more mills and still be within that guideline. <clears throat> the uh, I don't have this. The last last year the social services was three hundred and twenty four thousand dollars. So, and and our so we've got so we've got fifty fifty thousand dollars. So we could levy two oh. and a half mills. Right. Mm -hmm. it, you, well, it's a little bit more complex than that. You could actually you could actually levy a little bit more than that because we had a little bit of growth within the county, in the overall well, value right. of the county, and that's factored into it also. Take that out of that <laughs> Yeah. So you so there is a little bit of room here. Um, And the reason I'm just trying to roll this around in my <coughs> brain here, if we levied that into a reserve and our costs go up, we don't get pinched as hard as fast. But we can't know anyway. We can't raise it. We can't raise that levy. Oh, we published this already, didn't we? I mean, it isn't that big a deal. No, we just no, have to have a hearing if we get in a jam. Yeah, well, I, I don't think so. We, we've got we've got one hundred and twenty-four thousand dollars in the actual in the actual um, emergency fund. We've got two hundred thousand dollars of reserve in the general fund, and we've got uh, five hundred and sixty-four thousand dollars, I think, in the in the road. 
No, that one's that one's going to get depleted really quickly because we had look at the millions of dollars we had in 16 and 17, and there was nothing for 18 and 19. And the state isn't done cutting yet. The state the state finalized their 18 and 19 budget, but they they did they made it balanced by way 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 over predicting the oil revenues. And just like the last two years, they're going to come this summer and they're going to say, well, the oil revenues aren't where they were supposed to be. Now we got to make cuts. I mean, it's a sham. I mean, but that's what's going to happen. And the, the the 19 budget is way worse than the 18 budget. They've got that. It's not only that; it's the sales tax that goes along with it, with the activity. Yeah. yeah so I mean, they, they you know they have to have a they have to have a balanced budget, but all they do is just push the revenues way up, mm -hmm. fake revenues way up, see what in order to make it balanced and see what happens. They've been talking to my commodities broker. <laughs> so anyway there there's there's going to be some there's going to be some more cuts to the tax base in Griggs County and I'm afraid that the cuts are going to come what all that's left is, is going to be the school matching funds the the, the buy down on the 125 mills that's going to be a whipping yeah, you know, if you look seven years ago, they, they were only 20 mills was all the, the state was kicking in, and now we've gotten up to 125 mills. Mm -hmm. And so, and there's no there's no money left. They they spent everything they get their hands on out there, including the interest on on some of those special funds that were supposed to be locked away. The biggest pot there is the schools, and all they'll do is. If they knock 20 mills off, they go down to 100, they will raise the cap on what the schools can levy, and it's going to come out of the taxpayer's pocket. Now, we don't have control over that, but you and I, everybody here knows we get that <laughs> we get to blame for it because the taxes we get, to get paid credit. in the color. We get the big because the, tax tax statement. Statement. the <laughs> treasurer has to collect them. Collects it. Well, Majority Leader Carlson and Wardner, property tax hikes are probably the result of local, not state budgeting. That's what they wrote an article. <laughs> <laughs> didn't say anything about taking away the 12% buy down and, and only giving 8% back. There, there's the property, there it is right there. There's the headline. Yeah. It's nice to live in a bubble. <laughs> So anyway, we're we're good for this year and next year there's probably some couldn't live in a warm county where the valuations went down, the property tax or the sales tax revenue went down and there's no and the oil activity went down too. I don't know. Oof. You know, and so we're we're faced with you know, we're, we're faced with declining state funds we're, we're gonna be faced with the way it looks right now, increased taxes within the county because of what the Bidford's and go to school district and what they've decided to do. So it's going to be kind of a hostile environment, I think, as far as uh, the the outlook to the taxpayers. But I, I don't know what else we can do as a county commission to ease that. I think we've done pretty much everything we can do, but that's not going to make people feel better. District. Formed a building authority and then built that school. I thought they took that law away. They took away the upper, well. They, they lowered the, it can only be $4 million. On a school that size, it goes by a count. You know, after what happened here, the legislature took it up and, yeah. and, they, and the, the initial bill in the House was. Well, 89 to 11 to completely do away with building authorities. Mm -hmm. Well, I got to the Senate and the special interest groups got in there, the contractors, the lawyers, the bigger cities, and the Senate revised it so that they left it the same. Griggs County could do the same thing. They could build another three and a half million. Yeah, yeah. four, five, ten million. Yeah. Cities can do it. The park boards are limited, aren't they? The city, yeah, the, the, then, they, then the next step down was the School districts and they limited them by the amount they could they could levy without a vote of the people based on population size. So Min Minkota could could levy four million people with four million dollars with a vote of the 
school board and if it would have been over four million they would have had to have a 50 percent vote of the people to do it but what they did was they didn't put a term on it so you could actually levy four mills for two years and then the park boards they, they they put a few more park and recreation districts they put a few more restrictions in there but there's still a way around it so where it used to be, you know, it was 10 mills was the limit for 20 years. Well, now there's now there's no term. Just keep doing it over. And over. So you could, right. So you if you do the project in stages, you could so just it can keep actually going. get higher. Than Correct. Well, yeah, because Medcota has been over levying for the past few years, so they've got a big reserve. So they're going to go bid this project and accelerate the payment and leave this. The, the mill will be in place larger than it needs to be. Use the reserves. Use the reserves in the project plus pay it off in five years and then finish the project the other three million dollars after they get yeah. the first stuff paid off. I mean that's a possibility. That's never, that hasn't been stated but I, that is that is that would be possible to do that. It's been talked about in their It has meeting. been talked about in their meetings, yeah. But, but as of yet, they, they, as of yet, the the board voted to form a building authority comprised of the board. And I think two of them opted out. It was a seven person board, I think two of them opted out of that. So there's a possibility, or well, I guess this, this is future business, I guess we'd have to talk that, about that up there. But I do have to bring something up about that when we get to future business. Or are we there? Do, do we don't need to do anything with this budget, do we? No. Okay. No. Anybody have any other questions regarding the budget? Okay. <coughs> future business. Old courthouse, new courthouse. Future business. Can we wait till Jamie comes back in here? Well, I'll just. Wes caught me before the meeting, and that that pickup. Yeah, I don't get it. Which one, the red one? Yeah, it's one of them short pack seated ones. Mm -hmm. And they bought a cage, but he doesn't know if it's going to be able to get if they can get it in there. He's mm -hmm. going. They're going to see, but if not. He said, there's really not very much equipment in that pickup. It's like <clears throat> um, the radio and the light bar. They didn't put the computer hookups or nothing like that in there. I don't know why Bob didn't equip that pickup like he does every other cop car in the county, mm -hmm. other than he just kind of considered himself an administrative employee at that point because they had three deputies and an office deputy at that time back in that time frame but <clears throat> I think Wes has talked to VW and he thinks they can probably get into a used full-size four-door pickup for not any extra money and he said if if they if that cage isn't gonna fit in there he's probably gonna come and talk to us so that that's all I know so future business still all right so because of this miss Minn Kota thing there's a process underfoot to by a bunch of the landowners to annex land out of Minn Kota into Cooperstown district and right now it's just it's just people talking but they're they're, they're so anyway, the county commission's responsibility, if that happens, is there has to be a um, county committee, county committee, and a and a superintendent of schools. We don't have a we don't have a superintendent of schools other, other than Jamie. Well, is it me or is it Sam that's the designee? She well, no, it has to be some. It, it can't be Sam. It has to be someone with a four-year bachelor's degree. Actually, it doesn't have to be. Talk to the guy in Cass County. He's the 
can't be the it has if you're going to have a superintendent of schools has to have a four-year teaching degree and has to have practiced in the last five years yep what they did in Cass County is you know their auditor is probably has a, a CPA I don't mm -hmm. know what he is but he's not a teacher anyway he told me so they just appointed him as the designee they don't actually have a superintendent of schools right and that's what we did I, I we appointed you him right no, we appointed we appointed him for things like this, right? As the designee, and Sam does the re, the clerical stuff, the reporting, right? Yep. So, if this thing happens, I think Jamie is going to have to take care of the 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 paperwork as far as yep. is all that annexation business goes. It won't have much to do with Sam because she's just doing the other part of it, right? So, so the process, if this takes place, is, is you have to, in order to annex land, it has to be contiguous with the school That's district the border, you're going to. Right? So mm -hmm. it, the yeah, land has jump. to keep bunching up. Yeah. And, and don't you have to have a, a student? There has to be a student in. One student within the, contigu within the contiguous land mass. Right. So it would only take one student if you had. And you can't have a gap in the land, right? No. Just they got to touch, got a border. But it only takes one student within the whole thing. So you could have you could have thousands of acres, and if one student was switching to Cooperstown, that's all. It, that's all it qualif that qualifies. What will happen? I talked to the superintendent of schools up in Nelson County, and in fact, this has happened up there. The board will likely only take the, the amount of land needed to get that student. So if there's six quarters in the line to get that student. <laughs> They're not going to take 25 quarters to get No, to that's wrong. That's absolutely wrong. That's absolutely wrong. You can't deny it. You can't deny someone the right to move their land to to another to another district. That that's that's not how it works. So so the process is the process is if you apply for annexation in order to in order to circulate the petition, the petition has to be approved by the superintendent of schools. And the superintendent of schools approves the petition, makes sure that the people running drawn with the petition are actually qualified. Then the petition gets circulated. Then when the land mass has been accumulated, then the county commission of, whatever they call it. The we, county committee. County committee, which is appointed by the county commissioners, then sits down and hears the arguments for annexation. annexation. And the superintendent of schools is the basically the auditor of, of that meeting. You don't have a vote, but you're the one that organizes it. You're the one that that mod, that, that heads it up. Then, it, then if it goes to Bismarck and they give it the up, or, up down. or down, but it isn't. It, it, they're just basic requirements, and then the argument is the the arguments are it has to meet these basic requirements. But the arguments are basically. Uh, this, if in Bidford's case, for instance, the district they voted 18 percent for this raise in taxes and 82 percent against it, and now the that's a very strong argument to to get out of that district because the elected officials aren't paying attention to you. You want to go somewhere where they'll pay attention, and and the land mass, the bigger, the more filled in it is, the more regular shape. Is considered when it goes to Bismarck. So I don't know if it's going to take place. I don't. I, that's up to the people that are going to go ahead with it. But the county commission has a. The county commission has a duty. We have an obligation if it happens to allow the process to go forward. Right. I likely am going to have to conflict myself over. Because I know. I, I have a feeling that I will be a poor. I will. I will likely be a portion of that. And my father will likely be I know a that. portion of that. So I. We're probably gonna have to look at someone else to do it. I believe my wife would like to be a portion of it too. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, I, I, I think. I guess I would say I, would, I think we should look for someone else because I know that's what's gonna happen. So, so that that given, I, I think there are a number of people within the county that would qualify. A retired teacher, a retired. There's there's a required. There's a retired superintendent living in Cooperstown. I mean. 
there's a bunch of people that could be qualified to do this. So we might have to fill that position because... It, I, but he doesn't have a conflict. He doesn't have any authority to make a decision. No, All he's he, going to do is, 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 is a, just an administrative task. That's not a conflict. Well, but I'm going to be... I'll, I'll be a petitioner. But he probably he probably has a conflict. He probably has a conflict just in the fact that that the people he's serving, um, some of them are, are not going to like him being having this decision. So I mean, they're probably it's a, probably a, a conflict. It's probably not a legal conflict, but it's probably a moral conflict because he is elect, he is an elected official. It would be just like you or I trying to push this thing through, or anybody pushing it through. We we were an elected official. We serve. All the people that are going to make this decision, not just the ones that want to right. set, want an annexation. But we might end up being the county committee if we can't find anybody else to step into the ordinance nest because we have to come up with one. Yeah, and we we come up with it solely as the next step. Can we be can we be the county committee? Yep. And I I, I believe that's the case. Cass County Auditor. <clears throat> Three of the commissioners in Cass County are on the county committee yeah. because everybody is supposed to find their own representative in their district, and they just people just don't want to do it. Can you? Okay, you got nothing to gain by this. No. As a as Joe citizen, yeah, there's going to be a showdown. You want to referee? <laughs> <You gotta stand. laughs> <laughs> I mean, hell yeah. <laughs> Between these two, and tell them to draw. <laughs> right. Find the guy or the girl wearing a shirt that says "arguing with me" is like wrestling with a pig in the mud. <laughs> <laughs> After all, you figure out he likes it. <laughs> That's who goes on the committee. <laughs> I'm just saying. I know. <laughs> but but so anyway, there right. that is something. If this moves forward, they have to have a venue in order to. There has to be a conduit for this process to take place right. with them. And, and I get that. And there have been instances, there's been instances for in any township where there wasn't even a student involved. And the, the any county? Any, any county, and they allowed it. And the state allowed it. That's really weird because it, yep. part of the, one of the elements of the, on the statute is that there must be a student. One, one student for the whole There thing. you go, taking it a little early. <laughs> <You're> reading, <laughs> they're reading the code in the vacuum. Right. <laughs> but I don't know. I mean, I don't know how big a mass this black mass no is going to be. And, and I don't care. I mean, I'm not going to stick my toes in that water unless nope. I absolutely have to. But... I think the state is going to say no if it's such a large landmass that it it ends, the, ends up being a dissolution of the school district. I don't think they'll allow it. I don't, I don't know. know. I, I don't I mean, know. That's that. not up to I mean, us. That's not up to us. That's not up to us to 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 worry about. But I'm just saying. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know how the state's going to look at that if it comes to that. I mean, if it's half the county, I don't know. I, I don't know. Either. I mean, you can you can make some assumptions based on what the vote was in in that Binford district that it's probably going to be a fairly large landmass associated with this. Mm -hmm. um, the argument on the other side of it is going to be that if you annex out, what is it going to do to Binford? What's it going to do to the school district? Now, there's some people I would imagine that will say, I don't like this at all, but I don't want to risk dissolution. Yeah. And there'll be some people that will say, I, I just can't stand the principle of this. I, I can't stand the fact that they don't listen to me. I don't, I, I am sorry that what's going to happen, but what happens, let the cards fall where they may. Right. Well, I, and, there's, and a, there's a certain between. number, of, there's a certain number of people within that school district that are saying, you know what? The population's been declining since 1920. <clears throat> going out and spending millions and millions of dollars on a new school isn't going to change that. So we're going to end up with no school and debt to pay for in the end. I think right. there, there's, I've talked to that faction, you know, and I don't know how many of those people there are. So if, if, if those, if there's a lot of people that have that mindset, they'll say, okay, if we're not going to milk this cow as long as we can we're going to do something aggressive like this and and lose on the, on the end anyway then we might as well do it now 
Yeah. So, so I, don't, I don't have any idea how many. People I have. I have any. zero idea. But anyway, we have to be. We have to take, take steps in order to satisfy whatever happens. The the hope I, I would say is that the school board decides to put it out for a public vote and keeps lowering the cost of the project till they get enough people to go along with it and solves this whole mess. But as of right now, that isn't happening. And and I mean that. <clears throat> I still. Tr fully believe that that's the way it should work. I mean, that's sh the way it should have worked with this. Absolutely. Thing, that should have worked. I mean, this was, it was turned down. It only got a 40% approval rating district-wide. I mean, it was short by 20%. And, and then to step forward and do something like this with only one vote, I mean, it. I'm afraid it's hardened the the opposing sides to a point that well, there probably isn't much compromise. Pretty left. galvanized. I don't know. We can only hope it gets something that's better, but and and maybe Jamie's right. Maybe the, maybe the state will just give it to the one person, and, but I don't. That's not the case because this doesn't have a whole lot to do with this this form of this form of annexation is different than where you trade land. That, I think that's what right. I'm talking. About. No, no, I'm talking about. Moving land to a different district. Yeah, for but you can do you can move you can trade land you can move land right. from one district right. to another and and but but it, I, I guess where it's been done up in Nelson County and based on the experience that they've had up there is that they'll only take the land needed to get that student in in the county. Yeah, that's not the way I read the statute. And that's not what that's not what happens. I mean, th th this is a grievance. Th this process is 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 to settle grievances that they have that people have with the way they're being taxed. It doesn't necessarily have so much to do with moving your your child. It has to do with the grievances against the school board. That's not really the way I understand it. That's not how the that's it, not how the, the state views it. I don't no, think. it's it's to well, move the students. Yeah, that's school a, district is what, that that's I think that's the intention of this of this of the section. I, I don't think so. I, I well, I mean that is that is one of the intentions of it. But I I, I think it I, I I think it when you can move land in mass like this, it has to be more than students. Because if you want to move a student, you have the right to anyway. We have we have open enrollment. Right, but the, <coughs> the purpose behind it is so that the. Family or parents or landowners pay pay that school district for that kid's education, education at that school district that they're attending school. Anyway, it, that's matter. not for us to decide here. So anyway, we'll see what. Let's just talk for now. <coughs> yeah. I would, I guess, based on my pretty vocal opposition. Yep. To it, I think that it would be best that I'm not involved. Okay. I agree. I agree. So we'll have to start looking for a superintendent of schools. Not unless we need one. Not unless we need one. Are we done? We're done when you guys say we're done. We should do adjourn. It's <laughs> been moved by Dale and we adjourn as our second. Second. Second by Sean. All in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, both same sign. Motion passes. Meeting adjourned at 3.14 p.m. on this 22nd day of October 2017. Next regular meeting will, will shall be uh, on October 6th at 1 p.m. <laughs> Thanks, Lori. Thank you.